Hello all, welcome to EC Electronics. Hope you all are doing great. So in today's video, we are going to see some interview questions on digital electronics subject. So whether it is a company which is related to uh, embedded system or a VLSI, the digital electronics questions are very, very uh, crucial when it comes to interviews. All the interviewers, if it is an electronics based company, ask you some digital electronics questions because it is actually the favorite subject of a lot of people out there. So in today's video, we are going to see some interview questions on digital electronics. We'll be seeing some basic questions in this part, which is part one. In part two, we'll be seeing a little bit advanced question. If you want more questions on digital electronics, please mention that in the comment session. We'll do it as a series. So stay tuned. Please watch this video till the end. Also, if you are seeing the channel for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. In this channel, I post job updates, career guidance and subject videos on electronics. So what is the difference between latch and flip-flop? These are two terms which are often heard together and we study them together. There are various types of latches and flip-flops. The basic or the most important difference between these two are latches are level triggered okay they are level triggered means whenever the input is changing the output is also changing okay whereas in case of uh, flip-flops they are edge triggered edge means the control signal is also has uh, that is uh, the control signal is also having a prominent role in the flip-flop whenever the control signal is changing then only the output is getting affected so this type of triggering is called edge triggering so edge triggering means the control signal only uh, changes its state. The, cha the state is being changed uh, by the control signal. Okay, so this type of triggering, whenever the control signal is uh, changing, then only the output is getting affected. That type of triggering is called edge triggering. But when there is a change in input and then the output is getting changed, means it is called level triggering. Okay, so uh, flip flops are edge triggered, whereas latches are level triggered. Okay, so that is the basic difference between latch and flip-flop. Anyway, we study them uh, together in digital electronics subject because they are pretty much related to each other. Okay, so that is the basic difference between latch and flip-flop. It mainly differs in triggering. Okay, next question. What is a binary number system? We have studied about various type of number systems. In our channel itself, there is a separate video on number system. If you haven't watched it, please go watch that lot of people lot of people have commented that it is tremendously useful now here the question is what is a binary number system so whenever you are putting a number uh, in the bracket as two base in the base you put two it is called binary number and in binary numbers you can only see ones and zeros so this should be your answer it should be precise and it should be clear that a number given to the base of two is called a binary number and in that binary number you can only find ones and zeros okay so that is the second question now going to the next question which is which gates are called universal gate and what are its advantages now we generally call a gate as universal gate means if we can construct any type of gate with that gates means they are called universal gate the universal gates are NAND and NOR means with the help of NAND or NOR we can actually create any type of gate or any type of uh, circuit okay so that is the advantage of universal gate means we can actually create uh, this universal gates which are NAND and NOR to form any other gates okay so that's why they are called universal means we can create anything from it it is called universal gates so which are the universal gate NAND and NOR are the universal gates the next question is what is fan in and fan out so this is a very famous question in your college viva or whether it is in your interview okay now what is fan in fan in means consider there is a gate okay the maximum number of inputs you can connect to the gate without degrading the voltage levels of the gate that is a very simple uh, explanation of a fan in means the number of inputs which you can connect to the gate is called fan in but the voltage levels should not get affected that is fan in okay now what is fan out so consider that there is a gate the gate is being connected to other gate means the output from the first gate is connected to the second uh, gates input okay now in this case 
fan out is a maximum number of inputs that the gate can drive by maintaining the output levels constant. I'll explain it once again. So consider that there is one gate, then there is another gate. Okay. So I'm going to connect the output of the first gate to the input side of the second gate. So the first gate is actually driving the inputs of the second gate. Okay. So in this case, the maximum number of inputs of the second gates that the first gate can drive without actually affecting its input levels. That is called fan out. So you can actually consider this as the output of the first gate itself, but it is driving the second gate's input. Okay. So the maximum number of inputs that a gate can drive without affecting its input levels. Okay. So that is called a fan out. I'll say it once again as a proper definition. So a fan out is a maximum number of same inputs of the same IC family that a gate can drive maintaining the output levels of the gate within a specified limit. Okay. So this is actually related with the input and the output of a gate, which is fan in and fan out. It is a very famous question in a lot of interviews. Next one, again, a very commonly heard term, what is De Morgan's law? So De Morgan's law is a, you can say it is the, uh, the, 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 the root, the root of Boolean algebra. Lot of uh, expressions we can simplify with the help of this law or theorem, which is called De Morgan's theorem. Okay. So De Morgan's theorem, it is very simple. There is two expressions in De Morgan's theorem. So it states that a dot b the whole complement equal to a complement plus b complement that is the first expression the second one is a plus b the whole complement equal to a complement into b complement okay so this is actually connected with the the product of sum and sum of product terms anyway we don't go into the deeper things now because it is a this is a basic video so these are the two expressions uh, which is called as d morgan's theorem okay so this is a de, de Morgan's theorem and it is very useful uh, when you do Boolean expression simplification and logic gate simplification and all. Okay. So that is the next question, which is de Morgan's theorem. The next question which we are going to see is the next question is again connected with ICs. What are the characteristics of digital IC? How can all we characterize a digital IC? How can we classify or characterize its performance based on what all things? Okay, the first one is propagation delay. So the input of an IC is getting passed through it and it is passing to the output side. Okay, now how much delay is there, which is called propagation delay. Next one is power dissipation or power consumption. So whenever we are going for uh, digital electronics or VLSI, our main aim is to reduce the power consumption, right? That's why we are actually minimizing the size of ICs and uh, and circuits right so power dissipation plays a very important role so that is the second uh, characteristics of a digital ic which is power dissipation then fan in and fan out we have already discussed about these two terms next one is noise margin okay the amount of noise uh, how much there it is when the input is passing through the output side the noise should be minimum right so noise margin is also very important so these are the main characteristics of a digital ic the next one is again a basic question. What are the different types of number system? So we have, as I've told you, we have done separate video on various number system, how the numbers are getting converted from one number system to the other number system, what all steps you have to do. These all things I have made as a separate video. You can definitely watch that video and I would strongly recommend it. Anyway, the, day, the various type of number system are first one, binary number system, decimal number system, octal number system, hexadecimal number system. Okay. These are some uh, important types of number system. So, so these are the questions which I have included uh, in the part one of digital electronics uh, interview preparation series. We will do a part two very soon. Most probably this week itself, I will be uploading that. Please stay tuned with the channel for that. Please, uh, please prepare for your interviews and give a lot of importance to digital electronics if you are preparing for a core company or an electronics based company okay yeah so that's all for today's video if you found the video useful you can always like the video that will be an encouragement 
then you can share the video with your friends you can tell them that there is one channel like this which posts job updates electronics related videos etc and that's it thanks for watching keep on watching